Introducing the fake PTA Tour Golfer, Tiger's best friend, my dad, Danny Woodhead. Also introducing the self-proclaimed science expert, an amateur ramen noodle chef, my dad, Matt Slauson. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. This is a uh, this is an exciting week. We got Super Bowl week. This is the Out of Nowhere Pod with Matt Sloss and Danny Woodhead. Man, we got a lot to talk about. We do. We have a, we have we a lot to talk about. Where, where do you want to start, Slaw? All right, football needs to take a backseat right now. Uh, we need to just That's talk fair. about life for a second. Um, I am having one of the best best workouts in I don't know a couple of years. I feel actually probably. Probably a decade. One of the best best workouts I've had in a decade, maybe. Um, well, can I can I ask you a question though? Yeah, let's go. Like, like why did you have? Do you have a bad weekend? Like, it wasn't. Great. I'm saying, yeah, I had a it wasn't fun. a great weekend. Um, you know, it had potential to start off really good. Um, uh, decided to go to the local sporting goods store and uh, purchase some. Some firearms um, okay. to add to the collection. Uh, I mean, scratch that. I don't have any uh, as far as the government is concerned. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, they have records of it also, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And was like, okay, sweet. So then I go out to shoot them. Everything is going, going, going good. And my brother-in-law comes out to shoot. And he brings this missile launcher cannon with him. Um, and what it is 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 it's a it's a 223 uh ar um uh bottom with a 45 caliber top all these numbers mean nothing to me okay well it's it's a really really big gun that's uh oh yeah yeah one of those okay that's an ar platform so when he hands it to me i'm thinking oh okay it's a 223 so when when i do my little earplug deal which listeners out there in uh in San Diego, who shoot a lot of guns, are about to say this this fucking dumbass. But anyway, uh, so I had one earplug in because because I'm thinking like, oh, this isn't that bad. Then when the 45 Raptor went off, ruptured an eardrum. So that's fun. Did it seriously? Yeah, it was it, minor, minor. I mean, I'm I'm gonna make a make what's, a seventy percent what's, recovery. What's minor about rupturing an eardrum? That's my question. Well, a lot, I, but a lot of our listeners are thinking, man, I've had a ruptured eardrum and that's terrible. Are you? Yeah, sub- yeah it ain't good. But, uh, you know, you just you just adjust and you come down to the shop and you squat and then it makes things better. Um, my squat workout Saturday was garbage. Absolute garbage. Uh, but then I went to this uh, golf sim- simulator place to uh, to smash balls and play a play a simulator round of golf. And my swing was about as good as my squat workout garbage. Mm. Um, could not get a swing speed over one one ten. Um, the first the first hole of that simulator golf, I took an eleven, so that was fun. Um, on a par four. So, would you say, because this is where everything would go down? Obviously, the ruptured eardrum, terrible. Well, let me throw the cherry on top here real quick. Oh, no. Yesterday morning, get up, jump on the scale, 331. What are you uh, what are you doing? I was like, I okay. feel like you're just trying to grow. <laughs> like every week it's like I feel like you have a new you're just like the general pop, you know? General Don't population. You dare. Don't you're you like dare. the gen- you're like the general pop. It's like, oh, <laughs> I'll get started next week. Monday, here it comes. Yep. So that's my January first started this morning at five five a.m. Well, that's that's good. February first, three thirty one's trash, man. It is just, trash. I love you, and you know I love it you. It's trash. And, but to be and, fair, I was three three twenty six today. So, I mean, I don't know what happened. Big yeah, boot. but you should be under three twenty. Yeah, I know I should be. I should be under what are, three hundred. What what what's your I'm in, diet right now? 
it's beer? beverages. It's beverages is the diet. Bro, we had this talk. And until you cut this stuff out, you're like, oh, I'll only have a few. A few yeah. can't be 27. Right. Yesterday, I had zero. Uh, yesterday. What did you have on Saturday, Friday, Saturday? Don't you worry about that part. No, what did you have I on Friday, zero. Saturday? Was it more than 27? What was, I mean, that between sounds like two, a, between the two days or on one day. Oh, between the two days, I know it's without a doubt over 27. <laughs> I did not have 27 in a day. I tell you that. Did you have over 20? I don't think so. I'm going to have to call Cammie. <laughs> no, so, uh, yeah, what, so what, I'm not in a good need, place. What do our listeners need to do to help? I feel well, like I, I just got this say is I'm the, thankful that I'm not living in San Diego anymore because all these bush lights that I'm having would be ballast point sculpins. And then I would uh, probably be 360. Which so you are you have something to be thankful for. Yeah. I mean, the sculpins are good, but it just awesome. wouldn't be it just wouldn't be great for your figure. You wouldn't be a lean machine like you are right now. I would have a pretty similar figure to what I have, <laughs> have now. Just be a little bigger. It's, but I mean, it, it wouldn't be that noticeable. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. 360. Holy mackerel. I think that's noticeable. Yeah. So swaying garbage, squats garbage, weight garbage. And uh, yeah. So, so now, now I'm, is it on the wagon or off the wagon? You're, you know, you've been on and off. You're kind of, you're yeah, kind of I hanging. Don't know which, I don't so know which one means what. I see you in an Oregon Trail covered wagon, and I feel you. And I'm just hopping the, in and out. In I, and out. I, I, feel, I feel like you're on the back, just holding on with one arm, <laughs> and you're just dra- and your feet are just getting drugged, and your and your boots have holes in them because your feet are dragging. Yeah. But I knew yesterday was was going to be a good day. Uh, I got to be in charge of the kids for the majority of the day because the wife was was off dealing with the wind wind farm uh, oh, fighting gosh. fighting stuff disaster. Yeah, we don't have to get into that. I no, mean, but can, can you start driving the wagon instead of just hanging on? Yeah, yeah. So I so feel like yes. Cammy's been driving this wagon. Cammy's Slauson's wife, and when Cammy gets tired like one of your one of your kids are driving the wagon and dad's still just hanging out Mm -hmm. so yesterday i just had i just had barbell complex for my workout barbell complex and core and that was it and hitting golf balls was shitty then then uh i go up shower eat and cammy's like okay i gotta go said sweet uh so i'm in charge of the kids kids grab grab your ipads i'm gonna go play call of duty for a bit uh started off as a good day um, then I got to go out and tend to the cows, uh, put some hay out for them, realized I had to get the skid lo- loader out hardcore because all the snow had fell off the, off the top of the barn, right into their, their little area there where they got hay. So it's just forcing them all their, all their poop to just run right into the barn. I'm like, Oh no. So I need to get the skid loader out and handle this. I was just having a blast out there in the mud and the poop, just going to town. There's nothing better than hanging out in mud and poop. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I don't even have a beer with me doing this and I'm having fun. Let's go. That's tough when you have to say that though. I know. Was not it, was not a good spot. But it it was uh it was a motivator for sure. Hey, to all our listeners, if you could give feedback, um to our guy Slauson on what he needs to do to get below 326. Please just give us. Just I know what I message. need to do. Send us messages on Twitter at OON pod or our, our Instagram, same, same handle because our, our bud is on. He's, he's on and off the wagon. I'm well aware of, of what I have to do. <laughs> he, <laughs> but yes, feel, Feel feel free. Um, I mean, it's like the Oregon people, Trail game, the old Oregon Trail game, and we're ca- yeah. crossing a river or some mm-hmm. some sort of water, and it's almost like we keep losing you in the water. I know. We don't have any life jackets back then. I got the dysentery. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what you have. Got the old so, dysentery. <laughs> so we w- we would love feedback. We mm-hmm. we, we really would because. We want we want Slaw to get to a you know a little 
little trimmer area Tr- trimmer area uh number is what i'm mm-hmm, trying to say mm-hmm. so big week super bowl week tampa chiefs what are you thinking about it bro i don't know i'm i'm still i'm still split i'm still up in the air because i did not think tampa was going to be i did here. did i say that yeah, yeah, you you did, but I figured with that offensive line, they didn't have a shot. Um, which, by the way, uh, Ryan Ryan Jensen is now rated right the num- number one center. Oh, okay, is he? Uh, look, look, I love the way he plays. Dirt, dirty is all get out. I love that. I love it. Um, I can't say I watch anything else on the offensive line. I'm watching like concepts. The, the yeah, yeah, concepts. yeah. Uh, but he he does get away with about 15 holds a game. Love that. Um, but yeah, I love the way he plays. Uh, you know, I'm proud of the guy. Um, his guards, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on over there. So, do you think, uh, in other words, you think Chris Jones is going to wreck havoc? That dude, that dude, I've seen wreck a game against really good guards. I've seen, him. and even when he's way. and even when he's played against not so good guards, he he wrecks games. <laughs> I'll tell you what, watching, watching him, the one thing that I don't love about him. Yeah, he's kind of. He has a ter- He has a terrible game day swag look. He does. Oh my gosh! And he's they, always whining a whole bunch. Is he really? Ref, he's he, holding me. Shut up. Ref, God. he's he's holding me. Come yeah, on, that's what sir. I do? I'm not as good an athlete as you are. So shut up. I'm holding you. Right. Me. He's he's a better. I mean. Like you said, though, as an offensive lineman, a lot of times the defensive line is going to be a little bit more athletic. So that's just fair. Without a doubt. And he is a stud. Uh, But you look at what Tampa's got on their defensive side. It's like, oh, my, that's serious. But for for the Chiefs, Chiefs offense, I mean, is there any really great defense that has has stopped them? I mean, not not really. It's, they're going to find ways to get loose. They're going to their... find ways to run the ball, and they're they're going to do everything they need to do. It's just, uh, you know, can the defense make enough plays to just slow them down a little bit, and can Tampa just keep keep chunking it? Well, I think you look at both sides. You look at the the Bucks with with their talent. Even if Antonio Brown's out, they have a ton of talent. They I would argue if Antonio would, Brown is out, it's better for Tampa. See, I don't think so. Antonio yeah, he, Brown, yeah, he, he's he got may crazy have ability. A, he may have crazy ability, off the field history, but I'll tell you what: what ability man, does can, he have that that Scotty Miller uh, doesn't have? He, just his route. I mean, it's so much better. Uh, Scotty Miller's a savage. He's so fast. Antonio can take the top off, but his route running is disgusting. He he's he's he is that good now I, know, everybody's I, freak, freaking out about how how awesome the guy is what what has he really done all year he he's hasn't underachieved it, but, but he i don't think he has he had over 40 some catch 45 catches in eight games in that offense i'd say it's pretty good just because of i mean the guys they have they have godwin they have evans mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and and i think that's i think that's pretty good year he's not he's not going to be the number one but i just think he adds an element more so the defense has to adjust coverages that's the biggest thing so then other guys are going to have yeah you know easy easier time getting open well that, my that, prediction and look i don't know i don't know anything about playing playing receiver uh but my my prediction is Tampa's success is going to have nothing to do with Antonio Brown. If the other receivers have a heck, heck of a day. It's going to have everything to do with Tom Brady being Tom Brady is what I feel like. Yeah. He has my, and Mike Evans being Mike Evans. Like that's, that's just what it is. And if more than anything, if they can capitalize in the red zone, which that did not happen with the bills, which is odd because the chiefs don't have a good red zone defense. Yeah. My, I think where it's going to be interesting is if, Todd Bowles and the Bucks can just say, you know what, we're gonna we're gonna make them beat us with the running back, and we're gonna make them beat us with Hardman. Uh, we're gonna make them beat us with whoever their other receiver, if it's Wadkins or not. 
We are not. We are going to eliminate Kelsey, and we're going to eliminate Hill. So what you do is, yeah. But gonna, can you eliminate be, them both at once? I think you can, but you're going to – the run game is going to be big time. So Ndamukong Sue is going to have to wreck havoc. He's going to have to wreck – he's going to have to play five years ago in Domican, which he's still baller, but I'm saying when, like – Oh, yeah. He made people look like dolls, you know? Well, and this v, Vita Vea guy. <laughs> uh, he's not a bad football player. I That's a guy that I'd, I – Thank, thankfully did not get to play against uh, yeah. in my career because uh, he looks like like Vince Wilfork and then some. A like, superhero? Like, nobody not, can, can stop not, him. Not as cut up as a superhero, though. <laughs> Definitely not. That is, is a he, very large human being. Yes, but, I mean, if they can, if they can do that, that's what I'd do. I'd say, we're going to... I'll even put a, a corner on him, on yeah. Kelsey. I'm saying I'd run dime. I'd play dime against him and say, all right, beat us, beat us with yeah. the run. And, and you might beat us with the run, but you have to be okay with that. But, but I'm, I mean, when you look at, when you look at uh, the, the abilities, and I'm not talking about the ends here. I'm just talking about the two defensive tackles, Sue and Vea. Sue will swallow up everything on the right. Vea will swallow up everything on the left. And even if they can't, they will grab a hold of, of both guard and tackle or guard and center, and then those backers are just going to do whatever they want. Well, you got you got David back there, and then you got Barrett and Pierre Paul on the edge. Like that's why I'm saying, just make them. Like, Jack Barrett, the, the, he's, the, he's 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 having a heck of a go. Yeah, and Pierre Paul can still play. I mean, yeah. I don't know how many years he's in, but he's he's still playing, and uh, he's in twice as many fingers as he has. <laughs> that's that's what year he's in i was wondering uh, yeah that, that that's that's kind of what i was thinking too i don't know that was but, a guess uh, that was because <laughs> i'm assuming he has six fingers now maybe seven, no I, he, I think he has eight so oh, i don't think eight? it's well, i don't think no. it's i don't think it's year 16 um yeah. one and a half times his fingers ish but he's he's still balling out so just hey make the running back beat you just make him beat you Mm-hmm. And because the first game, Tyree Keel, I think we mentioned it last week, had over 230 yards in the first half. Yeah. Like, that probably shouldn't happen. That's probably not a good game. But I'm having, having trouble deciding who I want to win. I want, right, I want, right I want Tampa to win because I obviously, because I played with Tom and I, I appreciate everything that he puts into it. Yeah. Now, do yeah. I like the Chiefs and Andy Reid? I would be okay with them winning because I'm cool with Pat, Pat Mahomes and I'm cool with Andy Reid. I would love to see him yeah. win back to back. So to me, it's a win win right. for me. Um, yeah, I, I mean, Mahomes has, has has set a new standard of uh, dominance awesome. in this league, and uh, but Tom in Tampa, uh, it's a better story for. Oh, f- I mean, right. Unless that Mahomes wins be, it this year and then wins it next year, and it's like, oh, three straight. Then it's like, holy crap. Well, yeah. But but Tom, to switch switch teams at the tail of his deal and just ignite a fire in a mediocre organization and then go win a Super Bowl when everybody wasn't sure if it was Belichick or if it was Tom, I'm pretty sure everybody's sure now. Now, that well, isn't me taking anything away from Bill. No. Bill's obviously the greatest coach in NFL history. And I think Bill, I think he kind of knew they weren't going to be great this year, so they have enough cap space next year. I I think he has a little, he's scheming for moving on. Yeah. Or he, you know what I'm saying? But yes, I agree. Tom, the, at the end of the day, the players playing and the coach is coaching the players on the field, making the plays and yeah, for sure. A huge benefit having a Tom Brady, a huge benefit. Yeah, and and he's he's still playing. You know, he's he's still like really playing. It isn't like when when Peyton won his Super Bowl at the end there, when right. yeah he was there, but he could have also not been there and it still would have been the same. True. By the way, I I had a prediction. I said thirty one twenty eight the other day. I have changed it. It was Tampa Bay thirty one twenty. I think it's thirty five thirty one Tampa. What are you thinking? 
Yeah, I, I mean, I like that that score. It could easily be. It could be either way. It could be twenty-one seventeen. It could be, you know, for sure. Eight, it could be seventeen fourteen. I, I, I don't know. It, it just, just depends bro, on what these defenses we're on do. Offense, and I just want more points. That's why I say it. I know. That's why. They like, I'm convincing. Change all the rules. I'm convincing the teams that they're going to score more because they, you knew that they both listened to our pod, right? Ever oh, since sure. we ever since we were talking about BA and how I didn't like his offense, they were listening. Yeah, because I mean they changed. They're doing everything that they changed. You were talking about. It, well, they ch- yeah, and they changed, and now they're doing some good things. So I, I well, know they I do. called out their O line, and they haven't changed. So well, you, maybe but they, they don't. They don't you. listen. They, they only the skill positions in BA mm, and okay. Andy Andy Reid listens. Um, I think Andy Reid listens to us. I don't know if this is the reason. But I think he likes. I like. I I like to think that he likes you being three thirty one. <laughs> because now he's within striking distance. Yeah. Well, yeah. he knows. He's like, yeah. okay, Slaw's only fifty pounds less less than me, so so I can get there. <laughs> Andy's a big dude, man. Oh, he's a big dude. He's so big. And I love that he just rocks the Hawaiian shirts and just doesn't care how big he is. But I don't want him to, at least while he's coaching in visual, I like him at that weight. Yeah, for sure. Looks. He's enjoying I gonna, life. I was going to say he looks solid. He doesn't look solid. Like, I mean, he looks good. <laughs> he does. And, and, and he's smiling. He's having fun. Um, yeah. I, he, he might take over as the next Santa Claus once, once this one How? decides to hang it up. Freaking Scott Calvin. They're going to make Santa Claus three or four or whatever <laughs> it's going to be. Tim the Tool Man Taylor. I know. Wow. I mean, how good would that be? He'd make a great Santa Claus, and I guarantee he he has a he. I mean, just look at him. He has a heart for heart for presents. You know, he really and, does. And the milk and cookies for sure. Oh my gosh! Could you imagine the amount of milk and cookies he'd have that night? He's not throwing those in the trash. <laughs> He he just isn't. Yeah, so I don't know, man. I'm, uh, you know, back back to the game. I'm still torn because I want I want Tom to win for the story of it all, but I know that that story will also annoy me at some point come March, <laughs> when that's all that that's all the sports world is talking about. So I don't know. I mean, both both teams are sick. Um, uh, they both obviously deserve to be be there, and uh, and yeah, I'm excited to watch it. It'll be interesting. We got some more news in the NFL, obviously, uh, with a couple things I want to kind of hit on. First, our guy. I don't know if he's your guy so much because he never was a skill position, or he was more of a skill position guy, and he never dealt with O linemen. Mm. Sirianni. Sirianni getting to to Philly. Here we go. Here we um, go. I I think. I mean, we've been texting back and forth about that. I personally think it's an unbelievable hire, and I'll, I'll give my reasoning first. Mm-hmm. Um, Concept-wise, passing game-wise, scheme-wise, he's one of the best minds I've been around offensively. And then add Shane Steichen as the O coordinator, who they are very comfortable working together because they did a lot of the passing game stuff with Frank in San Diego. And Shane is right up there with Nick as far as being brilliant. Mm -hmm. And Herbert, obviously, I mean, Herbert's a great player, but he obviously had some really, really, really good success with Shane. Well, Carson Wentz is a baller. Mm -hmm. He, I I think what they're thinking is, hey, Frank, that's the last year that Wentz had a, you know, a great year. So let's hire little Frank. And that's Nick Sirianni. And, I think he's great, but I think the key to this whole thing working is he needs to surround himself with great coaches, which every coach has to do that, but especially guys that are, you know, amazing in the passing game, like the Sean McVay's, you get a great offensive line coach. And I think that's, if you look around the league though, now the more I think about it, the, the teams with the great offensive line coaches are the teams that are great offenses. You look at Cleveland. 
they are a completely different team with Bill Callahan. Even when Bill was in Washington, the way they ran the ball with Bill was it wasn't even close, you know, to what they were before. You look at New England with Dante uh, Scarnecchia. Dante's not there anymore. You can tell a drop off. Callahan you, and Dallas. Callahan and Dallas with DeMarco Murray. Dallas is a dumpster fire right now. Crazy. Exactly. And, and that's the thing that a lot of people don't get. Who, who's the O-line coach in Buffalo? Uh, Bobby Johnson. And you, Savage. And, he was and my he's assistant. Look at, yeah. what, look at what they've done. In, it's, so, yeah, they've thrown the ball a lot, but it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. In New England, when Dante was there, we threw the ball a lot on some games. We mm-hmm. also had a lot of games where we ran a ton. But when you have an O-line coach, that's the, to me, you need, you need a guy that has imagination. You need a guy that has concepts. You need a guy that knows that part of the game, but you have to have an O-line coach. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So uh, I will play uh, the contrary to this. Um, mm-hmm. not, not, not really the con- contrary, because no, I, you I don't like disagree Nick. with you. Yeah. Um, I like Nick. I respect Nick. I think he's a heck of a coach, but uh, uh, I've, I've said this before. I alluded to it earlier in the show. I, to me, to be a head coach, that doesn't matter how good of a play caller you are. You got to lead men and, For sure. and, um, you know, this isn't me saying Nick isn't capable cause I know he is, but it was an interesting hire to me because of Philly, Philly just, just got off the top of the mountain. I mean, they, they, they were just there a couple of years, years ago, and now they are going with, with a brand new young, essentially an unproven coach. Um, so I just thought it was an interesting hire because they, they still believe the pieces are there just last year. It all fell apart. Um, they, they were at the top of the mountain and then you're going to go from a proven coach to an unproven coach. Uh, it was it was just, just kind of a quick little shock to me. Like, like really Phil Philly's going with Sirianni, but I do like him as a coach. Um, and he does have the demeanor to lead, to lead men being, being around him. I, I, I was with him the last three, three years of my, my career. He's got the capabilities. He's got the demeanor to do it. Uh, but you are right. If he gets himself a baller offensive line, line, line coach, and now you got Shane. Offensive side is set. Uh, defensive side, um, I don't know where they're going to go with 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 that. It'll, it'll be interesting to see. Um, because... But I mean, he's not going to have any say in the D, and he no, he's he's going to hire someone to be. I think it's yeah. a great. I think it's a great job for a defensive coordinator because you're going to mm-hmm. run the show. But run the I show. do think it would serve us well to discuss the Carson Wentz thing because. Uh, I'm not sold. I'm, I'm not sold on Carson. I don't so, think a lot of people are sold on cart Carson. Does he have the ability for sure? For sure. He's got the ability, but I think this year, the reason why, why old Doug, Doug P uh, wasn't really sure is because he wasn't sure if Carson could handle what, what, uh, what he was trying to do. I, I think the thing with, du- with Doug too is the two the what is it two years two or three years without I think it was three without Frank he also didn't have the talent they a lot of people don't know this but when you win a Super Bowl you're gonna lose talent because other teams will overpay for your guys they don't have the same talent especially at receiver they just they just don't their O line has been a travesty and I don't always watch O line except when it comes to blitz pickup they're a travesty. An absolute travesty, and I think that's yes. hurt. That's definitely hurt Carson. But I, I think the thing that I loved about Frank, and I mean, it started under Wiz and Hunt in San Diego, but it's the same same stuff. Is their concepts and their schemes do help people get open? Now, if it's man to man, you're on your own. You better win, and that's what makes me nervous about Philly more than anything is their ability to win man to man. And they just, they've been struggling doing that. If they can get that, I'm cool with them. I think, I think they can be really good. I think as far as what Nick did with the receivers in 
San Diego, if he coaches the team and he sticks to who he was, I think he'll be fine in leading men. Now it's mm-hmm. going to take, he's going to have to build trust because you know, you get these people with families and stuff. You're not always going to just trust a, a guy. You have to earn it. Mm-hmm. And I think if he does that, the, the one thing that I always appreciated about him is he coached people hard and mm-hmm. he, and he, uh, he kept, he, he made people be accountable when I was with yeah. him. Yeah. Now no. I don't know. I don't know. But that he yeah. he didn't I'm put in up with the bull with crap. You there. I'm and in agreement with you there. He did not mince words. He didn't play around with like the political stuff. He would let you know if you sucked. He'd lie to India, and that's that's the thing that I think is going to be good. And I was on a a Philly pod and a Philly radio station. They were talking about him. They're like, "Oh, that's what we want, though." I guess they didn't have that. Well, if Nick stays true to himself, now he doesn't have to be a Bill Belichick. Because that'll never work. But if if he's going to coach hard, I think I think they can do well. I think Carson Wentz will be the starting quarterback. Yeah, I really that's, do. That's literally everything we've been saying for months when you look at what's happening to Nebraska football right now. Oh, gosh. All you do is you set the standard and you stick to the standard. And the standard doesn't change for one player to the next. The, standard's the, the standard is the standard. And as long as Nick does that, he will be successful. And I don't want to get into this, but it's the same way with, um, you know, the Chargers. My first year, we had a standard. Here we go, riling no, me up. No, I know, but it was a standard that was set, mm-hmm. and that's what like it took a while for us to get there. But that's why we made the playoffs, and we were really good. And then when other things, outside things, get involved, and I'm not going there with that, and I don't think we need to. The standard gets moved. And if the standards moved, no, especially your veteran veteran players, they do mm-hmm. not trust anymore. And they're like, mm-hmm. what, are, what are we doing? Like, we want to win a championship. Let's not, let's not move the standard all over the place. If we have it here and it's set, we're good. We're good. We're going to figure it out. But if you move that standard or if with certain guys, if, you, if you're like, oh, no, that's not a standard for him. Well, then it's not going to work. It just doesn't. And that's the thing that I think if Nick just stays true to himself, I think he's going to do really good in Philly. Goff and Stafford. What about that? Yeah. Stafford going to the Rams. That's what actually actually I was going going to bring up in in, uh, relation to Carson Wentz. I, I was questioning whether that team, that organization, that coaching staff truly believed that Carson could get it done. It's literally the same thing out 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 west. Yeah. I I think McVay is like you know, I've been I've been leading this this kid to water, he just won't freaking drink. Just he, just drink the damn water. He and, drank a little water the first couple years when people didn't know about him. Yeah, but uh I think it became apparent to Sean that he wasn't able to grasp mentally what he needed to do. So he's like, "Okay, we need to make a switch." From from what I've I've heard with his teammates, and this is actually not Eric Weddle. I know everyone's thinking that, but I've played with other people that were like on the practice squad and even just lower on the fifty three. And the I think the biggest fear is, or not the biggest fear, but the thing, Sean McVay. I think there is a reason they went fast, mm-hmm. because you can be in the headset until what is it like fifteen seconds in 15, the play clock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you get up and you see the defense. And then Sean decides on yeah, on what to play. check it or not. Yeah. yeah, which is different for us because we had Phil mm-hmm. and I had Tom, and there'd be like the coaches would give him options and stuff, but Phil had done his homework already. He knew what he was calling. Mm-hmm. It'd be like, hey, run either. They'd give him a couple plays, and then he chooses. Whereas mm-hmm. I think McVeigh had a play, and then he, then he changed it. That's the tough thing. If you have to always play fast in order to move the ball, that's tough. It just it just is. Meaning you have to be at the line right away to know the audible if the quarterback doesn't know the audible. I don't know if it's still like that, but it yeah. appears that even, even it Mark's, could be. Even Mark San- Sanchez was attuned, in tune with all the checks. Now, I know Without it was tough for him. I know it was tough for him. He was studying those those checks every single day. But... I'm, 
I'm not going to say that uh, Schott, Schottenheimer guided him because I don't believe that, but Callahan guided Mark and made the made it really easy. He would always tell him cert, certain weeks the the buzzword was Afro two two G. That's away from ro- rotation to the G bubble. Yep. Those those were the if, if that was the check for that week. That was it. And just hammering home, hammering home. And Mark had it written everywhere. Afro 2G, Afro 2G, just yeah. everywhere. So you have, it's, you just have these, you know, things that you remember, like the checks, they'd come up with like names like that. There were multiple, but that's one of the known ones because, you know, you, you do certain runs, you run off the bubble. Mm-hmm. It, it, that's that's where it decides the the bubble as in the bubble in the defensive line for those people that don't understand could be under over whatever but it's mm-hmm. you you run to the bubble and mm-hmm. there's also some other plays that you run away from it but that's the thing is you you have stuff like that and if if guys know the checks it's going to be important whereas i think now i don't know i haven't played with stafford i haven't had a bunch of people but that have played with him I know one guy that didn't. He said St- Stafford was brilliant. I think he's going to crush it in L.A. And some people are like, oh, they gave up so much for Stafford. No, they gave up so much so someone would eat Goff's contract. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the main thing. Because some people are like, oh, if that's, if that's how much. They, think, of, think of someone else. Think they could have got even more picks. No, 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 no. They had to give up to take contract, that Goff's contract, too. Now, luckily, they have a ton of talent. And I think Stafford is going to just do amazing. And he has Aaron Donald on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, that that is going to be a force to be reckoned with over there. Um, no, I, I, and, I think... and the Ram the, the Rams do have a pretty good O line too. So so they're going to be able to protect him, um, keep him safe. And just as as a true veteran, you know this this will be what you're com- coming up on your thirteen for him. Um, you know he, he he's a true veteran, and and a system like Sean's, it's gonna be cake for him. So oh, I I, I I totally agree. I think it'll be a great fit. Now you have the D- Deshaun Watson. That's the other quarterback that everyone's talking about. People say he's done, and and yeah. you hear some of these. Um, analysts saying he got he has to get out of there. He has to get out of there. That well, organization. Yeah, I know nothing. I know nothing about Houston. I know like nothing about these, their these analysts. They want him to leave, so it's just more crap for them to talk about. Uh, but but look, Houston constantly underachieves, underperforms. Uh, so just just based on that, look, I've never been in that organ organization i i've known a lot of guys who have played in that organization um just from the outside looking in it doesn't look great because with their studs over the years they should have been at least winning the division every single year but but it doesn't happen um now now it's interesting now to to see that you know they hired their new coach and their new GM and now Casario's unreal yeah. by the way but all the news comes out now uh that that Deshaun has requested a trade well he requested a trade before it was before head the coach, coach before the coach and the GM were hired he right um so who knows maybe maybe the new hire the new hires will have changed something maybe well casario's unbelievable with with being with him he's un, he's really good at what he does then yep. couple the new head coach i didn't know anything about david coley until looking stuff up mm-hmm. but he was with andy reed for well over a decade we've talked about andy reed pretty good right pretty and, good and why is hi- hiring an old coach all of a sudden a bad thing now Everybody's freaking out about oh he's sixty five years old. Who who the hell cares? Bill's a million. Yeah, you know. Pete, and, and and the thing Pete is, Carroll's pretty good. Yeah, Pete Carroll's really good. But David Coley, maybe he knows how to lead men. Yeah. And I don't think Jim or John Harbaugh. People yeah. can say what they want to say about him. He doesn't hire bad coaches. Mm-hmm. He does not hire bad coaches. Yeah. But I mean, 
their, their linebackers coach just got the defensive coordinator position at Michigan, obviously with his brother, but uh, Wink Martindale, the defensive coordinator there, really, really good. Um, uh, gosh, I, I'm losing his name, but the linebackers coach there last year, now the defensive coordinator for the Jaguars, they have good coaches. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Coley's going to do a good job, and he's yeah. going to he's going to be able to lead. Man, I I hope he stays because he's it's just I know, so. Dumb. I know Hopkins isn't there, but they are loaded with the, with guys that can win versus man to man. They are loaded in receiver. It's just so so dumb because everybody's like, oh, he's not the 32, 34 year old, you know, super super sexy hire. Yeah, yeah, you know he's what they're doing. He's a super sexy sixty five year old. You know what hire. they're they're doing they're saying we're we're done messing around we're we're gonna get serious and bring in a coach with a with a bunch of experience i don't care that he's never been a head coach that doesn't he's matter. been around some of the best head head coaches in this game and he's been coaching for you know a million years so he obviously knows what the heck is go, going on now if deshaun left obviously it gives us all a whole bunch of things things to talk about and trying to predict where where he goes that would be the fun part yeah no it, it would be the fun part but i i actually love him in houston now he obviously was burned by some front office maybe was burned by the owner i don't know but it's a different regime i mean and, the owner's the same but and the frankly, general manager's running the Bi- show billy o'brien you know no offense to the guy as a coach yep. um you know he 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 did he did some good good things there um and that's with having consistently year in year out one of the worst offensive lines i've ever seen um and that's what he was working with and they did have a couple playoff playoff years uh but when you are the head coach and a gm and your last name is not belichick it does not work i agree but the thing is if you just hire someone like if he would have Nick Casario because they knew each other and he knew the talent mm-hmm. and they tried and they yeah. tried and but, then, and then the Pats, but they, but they never had their, his GM. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's exactly right. They wouldn't allow him out. Yeah. So I, I think, man, I, I like the setup. I love Casario as the GM. I love now. I mean, I didn't know about him a ton before cause he's just been assistant, but I love Coley. I, I think he could be a really, really, really good head coach. And, yeah, so so what if he's 65? And he can coach till he's 75. Ten years is a long time. That, like, never happens in the NFL, unless you're Andy Reid or Bill Belichick or Pete Carroll, right? Mm-hmm. It just doesn't, it doesn't happen. Yeah. So I think it's a great hire. I'm excited to see it. Um, I think we're going to have a very interesting offseason. I really do, because they they've talked about – uh, they're going to have an interesting offseason. I don't think A-Rod's going anywhere. People were talking about, you know, Rodgers yeah. maybe getting traded. That's that's not going to happen unless... I would have only loved it if he would have gone to Chicago because that would have been hilarious to me. Fair, but I think if, he, if they would have traded Aaron Rodgers, they would relocate the Packers. Yeah, yeah, the Packers, no. They can't, they can't dump Aaron until Aaron's done. And if they do... They they are not thinking correctly. He's the he's the dang MVP of the league. Are you kidding Tom's, me? Tom's forty three, and he's still going. Aaron's going to still be go- if if Aaron wants to, he mm-hmm. could still be going then. Yeah. If he if he wants to, he has plenty, plenty of years left. Plenty yeah. of years. Now, left. what they may want to do is sit down with the guy and say, hey. Hey, can we restructure your deal and find out different ways to move some money around so we can get you some more weapons here? Right, and that's fine. That's what they should but, probably. Now, do. I will say the Packers don't do a great job of hire or of signing free agents, though. They've just never. They've no, always tried to. They like to draft. They like yes. to draft. I get that, but but they they need to get, they need Aaron's, to get a few more free agents. Aaron's con contract has just strapped them so much that they just can't really do anything, and and. I'm not saying take money away from him. In fact, no. you know what? Give him more. Give him just, more. Just, but just, just do it differently. It do it differently so that way they can actually give him some players. If, if I'm there. Give him some offensive line depth. I'm, I'm finding ways. Get rid of get, that, that corner, number 20, whoever the hell he is. Get yeah. him out and, and get a real corner in there. Yeah. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Um, gosh. 
I love the NFL. It uh, it's the best. It's the best. Uh, it's the best professional sporting league out there. So it's gonna be a fun off season. I'm looking forward to it. 